I believe species can have lots of varieties within that kind, but that's not really evolution. That's a lie. They're wanting you to believe all six parts to that theory by only giving you evidence for number six. People say, well, couldn't mi macroevolution just be micro over longer periods of time? No. The central question of the Chicago conference was whether the mechanisms underlying microevolution can be extrapolated to explain the phenomenon of macroevolution. The answer can be given as a clear no. It's not going to happen, okay? Variations certainly happen, but they're limited. The farmers have been trying to get bigger pigs for a long time, but they'll never get a pig as big as Texas. There's a limit in there someplace, okay? Roaches become resistant to pesticides, but they will never become resistant to a sledgehammer. There's a limit, okay? People say, don't bacteria become resistant to drugs? Well, no, you just hold on a minute. Dr. Spetner points out this based on a misunderstanding. The mutations that cause antibiotic resistance still involve information loss. For example, to destroy bacteria, the antibiotic streptomycin attaches to a part of the bacterial cell called ribosomes. Mutations sometimes cause a structural deformity in ribosomes. Since the antibiotic cannot connect with the misshapen ribosome, the bacterium is resistant. But even though the mutant turns out to be beneficial for the moment, the mutation, it still constitutes a loss of genetic information, not a gain. No evolution has taken place. The bacteria are not stronger. In fact, under normal conditions with no antibiotic present, they are weaker than their non-mutated peasants. It's like if somebody's going through the countryside handcuffing everybody and hauling them off to prison and going to kill them. But you don't have any arms. So they can't handcuff you. So you survive. Oh, wow, beneficial mutation. Well, duh. It might be beneficial for the moment, but you get back in the population with the work of folks, and you're going to be at a disadvantage. So don't tell me this bacteria becoming resistant to drugs is an example of a process that's going to turn a rock to a human over 4.6 billion years. You're dreaming, okay? You're in la-la land, okay? Mutations always produce the same kind of plant or animal. That's not real evolution. The information for the variety has to already be in the gene pool. No new information is ever added. The gene pool of the new variety, like the Chihuahua, is actually more limited than before. What they've done with, with dogs, they've selected a certain slice of the gene pool to survive, you know, big dogs or little dogs. That's not evolution. It's selecting pre-existing information. That's all it's doing. And how long would the Chihuahuas last in the real world? <laughs> Turn them all loose into the woods and watch what happens. Yep, go ahead, make my day. Right. Um, genetic information is lost when you get a variety, it's not added. Real evolution would require an increase in genetic complexity. I believe it was Richard Dawkins who was asked the question, I got the videotape of it. Uh, he's, he was asked the question, can you think of an uh, example of a mutation that increases genetic complexity? He was totally silent for 19 seconds. Finally, he said, shut the tape off, please. He couldn't think of one. There aren't any. There are no mutations that increase genetic complexity. You might shuffle genes around, but you're not adding new genetic material. I grew up in Illinois, corn country. They've got a lot of different kinds of corn there. But I'll tell you what, folks, you can cross-breed your corn from now until the cows come home. You'll never get a hamster or a whale or a tomato to grow on your corn stalk, okay? There are a variety of dogs. Nobody questions that. But there's still a dog. And this Irish textbook calls it divergent evolution. Oh, come on, don't give it a fancy name. It's still a dog. It's a dog kind, and it's obvious to a five-year-old it's a dog kind. This Mexican textbook says, oh yeah, horses and zebras evolve from a common ancestor. That's not evolution. It's still a horse, okay? And there are little bitty horses and big horses today. We had the world's smallest horse visit our dinosaur adventure land. Talk about useless. <laughs> Can't ride it. Well, my granddaughter wrote it, but... <laughs> Horses, zebras, and asses can all be crossbred, and they get zorses, zonkeys, zionis, z-dogs, and zebras. But that's because the horse, the zebra, and the ass, are, and the pony are all the same kind of animal. And anybody with even part of a brain ought to figure that one out. Here's a herd of zebroids running around. Now, in the last 100 years, the Kentucky Derby has gone from an average winning speed of 127 seconds to 123 seconds. Now, even in the old days, they had some pretty low times turned in. Turned in. How much money would you guess has been spent on selective breeding trying to win the Kentucky Derby? Like millions and millions of dollars, am I right? I don't know if they reached the limit for horse speed or not, I don't know. But I suspect they're getting fairly close to the limit. If you really want to win the Kentucky Derby, why don't you breed wings on your horse and fly around the track in 12 seconds? My whole point is, sure variations happen, but there are limits to the variations. Why the evolutionists can't see that?
that, I don't know. They want to think there's enough variety available that a rock can turn into a human over 4.6 billion years. There's a variety of cows. They might have had a common ancestor, a cow. There's a variety of chickens. This is a magazine where you order chickens. What kind do you want to get? You want to get red rocks, white rocks, cherry acres, brown leghorns, golden cones? But the magazine says, the jungle fowl are the original bird from which all varieties and strains of domesticated chickens are derived. Did you know all the chickens had a common ancestor? It was a chicken? There are eight kinds of bears in the world. They might have had a common ancestor. I don't know. But they're still a bear. And it's obviously recognizable as a bear. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage all have a common ancestor. A plant. That's not proof we came from a rock. Here in California, they graft English walnut trees on the black walnut stumps. They do these by the, by the millions all over the place. Well, that's because the English walnut tastes better and it's easier to crack, but the root system rots easy. And with the hard pan out here, they get a lot of water stays in the soil. The black walnut system is much better root system, but the nuts are hard to crack and they don't taste as good, so they graft them together. Well, you can graft them together because they are the same kind, okay? You can never graft an English walnut tree onto the back of a turtle. See, that, that's the point that I don't know why evolutionists can't get that. The Bible says they bring forth after their kind. That's all we have ever observed. Now, if somebody wants to believe, capital B, believe something was different long ago and far away, okay, you believe what you want, but it's no longer science. There's no scientific evidence to support evolution except known lies, okay? If real evidence exists, I would like to see it. But I'm sick and tired of paying for lies to be taught. Suppose I had a theory that the moon is made of green cheese. That's a dumb theory, but it's, there's no law against having dumb theories. It's a good thing, right? Then suppose I said NASA proved it when they went there in 1973 on a secret mission and drilled a hole and found the moon is made of green cheese. Well, see, now we got a problem. I have a dumb theory, which is fine, but I'm using lies to support my theory. Oh, now that's not fine. And tell what's worse. Obviously, anybody can have a theory that they want, but it's wrong to, to, use, to lie about my evidence to get people to believe me. And it's worse to get paid by tax dollars while I lie to support my theory. So if you have some evidence for evolution, I want to see it. I really do. But I'm going to show you some things in your books that are just plain lies, and I want those taken out of the books. Then if you end up not having any evidence for your theory, well, I'm sorry. Get a new theory. That's the way science works, okay? You get a theory, you give evidence for it. If you don't have any evidence, you throw it away and get a new theory. It would work that way, and it does work that way in everything except when it comes to evolution. They don't want to throw that theory out because that's the only way they can get rid of God. They say, we've got evidence from fossils. This is silly. Anybody with half a brain can tell you absolutely no fossils could possibly count as evidence for evolution. No fossils count. In a court of law, they'd laugh at you. You bring some bones in. Hey, Your Honor, these ancestors are the, you know, these bones are the ancestors of everybody today. Well, duh. You don't know those bones are the ancestors of anybody. You can't prove those bones had any kids. <laughs> and you sure can't prove they had different kids. Now, if you want to believe those are the ancestors of somebody, okay, now, now you're off to religion, not science. And you ought to keep your religion at home. Don't bring it in school at taxpayer expense. <coughs> Evolution is dead. Some followers have a hard time letting it go, and they're actually willing to lie to you to make you think everything's fine. Oh, yeah, he never looked better. Pulse and heart rate look good. Yeah, he looks fine, folks. <clears throat> no, it's a dead theory, okay? There's no evidence for it. Okay. Textbooks say, well, the fruit flies evidence for evolution. They put those flies in the laboratory and nuked them and microwaved them and x-rayed them and did all kinds of neat things to the flies. And they got some really weird mutations. They got flies with curled wings. They fly around, zzz, 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 couldn't go anywhere. Flies with no wings. It's not a fly, it's a crawl. <laughs> they said, boys and girls, fruit flies refuse to become anything but fruit flies under any circumstances yet devised. Good observation. So all mutations observed produce flies that were inferior to the original fly. Good observation. But the conclusion they come to then is, fruit flies must have evolved as far as they can go. Uh, well, duh. There's another conclusion, you know. Maybe fruit flies are doing fine until you guys got